hello good morning we're just going to the greenhouse top tip about greenhouses at this time of year unless it's going to freeze i don't shut the greenhouse door i want to keep the air circulation going good morning my name is georgie newbury i'm a flower farmer and florist based between a fashionable bruton and up and coming wing canton here in sunny somerset it's sunday morning and I am actually about to jump in the car and ping off to visit my parents um, for a few days because it's important to visit your family. <laughs> um, and so off I go. Uh, if I'm lucky, we might be able to persuade mum to do another clip about putting her garden to bed for the winter because she's top ti her top tips about putting her garden to bed for the winter are very efficient. She's the queen of efficiency. Um, on the subject of which, I thought we'd have a little chat about a greenhouse at this time of year. By the way, if you enjoy these clips, please do subscribe. There's a button somewhere where you can subscribe. There's a bell icon that you can click and we will tell you when we've got new clips coming out. And uh, you can always buy me a coffee if you like the tips and tricks I give you as we go along, for which I'm extremely grateful and which you do in sufficient numbers to make it worth my while mentioning it every time. So thank you very much for your coffees and um, I will keep enjoying them so long as they come along. Uh, the link for the coffees is in the blurb about this clip. Thank you. Anyway, back to the matter in hand. I am slowly bringing everything into the greenhouse. It is still quite warm. It is uh, mid-November. I think it's the 10th of November. Uh, no, it's October. What am I talking about? It's the 10th of October and I'm walking around in flip-flops still, which while I am quite a hardy character, that is really, um, I've never worn flip-flops in mid-October before. Um, and so it is not really cold enough to bring everything in. However, it is that time of year when suddenly the weather can change. And while I have no frost forecast at the moment, what happens here is we suddenly go below four degrees. And when we do, I lose things if I'm not prepared. So I'm bringing things into my greenhouse, uh, slowly, slowly, like my succulents here. Um, and look, it's a little money plant. Um, I love these. They remind me of my school days. I used to have one when in my bedroom. <laughs> I don't know. I was convinced that I had to have one because I was very superstitious as a child. And um, I was convinced that if I had one, I was going to make my fortune. <clears throat> Still waiting. Anyway, never mind. Uh, so I'm bringing in any cuttings I've got. These are pencilments that were brought me by my lovely friend Lorraine. Um, all the cuttings that I've taken. If you're interested in taking cuttings, there's still plenty of time before the frost. So if you want to know how pop back there's a video a clip I made several clips ago about taking cuttings and that'll uh, debunk the fear and fear about taking cuttings and I haven't got masses of seedlings because my big poly channel is full of seedlings um but I have got my sweet pea for example seeds which have been sown and haven't quite germinated yet <laughs> I'm still at the stage where I come in and check every 20 minutes oh here they are Oh, look. And here is next year. The flower farm is here. You can see tiny little sprouts. Um, oh, what a relief. Always a good thing when the seeds sprout. So I'm bringing everything in here. I'm also going to give my greenhouse a really good wash because inside, you can see it's not terribly clean up here. And it's not filthy, filthy. But what I don't want is a lot of mouldy pathogens building up. And then in the winter, if we have a lot of warm, damp weather, then I risk things rotting. And I don't want to build up any rot in my greenhouse. So I will uh, clean the greenhouse. And I use washing up liquid. I know there are lots of very efficient specialist or you could uh, cleaning products. But personally, for me, <laughs> washing up liquid works really well so i'm going to clean my greenhouse from top to bottom with washing up liquid just to keep the pathogens out and i also have warm beds which are made out of boxes really simple boxes i'll show you in a minute um 
filled with there's a whole description has to do it in my book the flower farmers here um but they're just boxes filled with lined with poly filled with ordinary builder sand um and then uh, there's a hot cable you can buy them on the internet for very little money which is laid sort of like underfloor heating along the bed a bit more sand and then in february when i need a bit of heat to get things germinating i can turn the beds on for the moment i won't turn them on um so i'm going to just tidy those up add a bit more sand where it's looking a bit sparse just refresh everything in here um and yes the succulents are coming in as well and while I do it, I will do what I always do at this time of year, which is take a view. Now, if you run a small business, like I do, if you run any kind of business, it is very easy to become, end up as if you're on a, a hamster wheel of just doing the job, doing the job, doing the job. Because people running small businesses particularly often are doing all the jobs. And so... They get themselves into a, a rhythm of just constantly repeat, 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 repeat. And A, it becomes quite drudgy. And so one feels lack of inspiration and feel, you know, it's like, oh, this isn't the lifestyle business I had planned. Um, I'm not feeling inspired and thrilled by it all the time. I have found myself in a in a rut. And so at the end of the season, I do this every year. It's an October, November job. And I take my year planner, very <laughs> fundamental tool in my life. Um, I do flower farmers year workshops online. You can book a place if you like. So I take my year planner. I take my cash flow forecast. Again, <laughs> uh, come on a lifestyle business workshop and I'll give you the nitty gritty on that front. And I take my seed sowings, my planning, my, my planning and harvesting schedule what I'm planning to plant and I line them all up together and I take a view and this may sound really kind of hard-nosed but I think just because one's running a lifestyle business doesn't mean that one shouldn't occasionally be a bit hard-nosed and I'm going to analyze what's worked this year what hasn't worked this year also what I've enjoyed this year and what I haven't enjoyed, what turned out to be too time consuming, what turned out to be unexpectedly successful and that I might try again. All of that I will analyse now because I have about three weeks, uh, three weeks, possibly a month before the Christmas crazy starts. And um, like a lot of flower farmers around the world, my Christmas crazy, you might think, but you haven't got any flowers. Well, of course, there's wreathing. And so we do online wreath workshops, but we also supply wreaths, um, a lot of them around the place. Uh, so uh, come on, one of my, I personally, I'd much rather teach other people to make a wreath than um, make a wreath for them. But obviously not everybody has time or materials. But if you do have time and materials, then uh, come on one of my wreathing workshops. Very nice to be mentioned in Country Living magazine, their November issue on that count. Anyway, so that is what I'm going to do. And actually a few days up at mum and dad's will give me time also to reflect on how the season's been and what I really want to achieve next season. A lifestyle business is, yes, you need to make a living. Of course you need to make a living. But it is the kind of business in which one can decide actively what kind of a living one wants to make. And, of course, while one has to have a cash flow forecast that will uh, make sure that the bills are paid and the school shoes are bought and... There's enough spare to go to the pub occasionally. Um, one doesn't have to force oneself to make as much money as one possibly can. You don't have to build a huge business. What you have to do is build a business that suits you and continues to suit you. So we're Common Farm Flowers is 11 years old. 11 and a half. And um, it was my colleague, Nicola Cretney. Any of you who have been on any of my workshops, uh, Nicola helps me out with a lot of the admin <clears throat> and the online stuff. And it was she who years and years ago said, you know what, once a year, you really need to have a sit down and take properly 
take stock. So while I clean my greenhouse and while I bring everything in, I've been thinking about this. And while I'm up at mum and dad's for a few days, I will do some proper taking stock. And who knows where <laughs> the strange ideas that will pop up um, while I have that taking stock experience uh, will take us. But anyway, thank you very much for watching. I hope um, my philosophical ramblings <laughs> are useful. Do sign up, uh, subscribe if you've enjoyed this. Um, there's still time to plant your, sow your sweet peas, don't panic um uh do keep your greenhouse clean as clean as a whistle everything will last much better through the winter if you do and if any of the tips and tricks in this little chat have been useful then please do buy me a coffee thank you very much and i'll see you in a few days bye bringing in the succulents is a chance to give them a tidy up and take out i don't want anything that's even remotely got any mold on it in my greenhouse so I'll give them a weed and take them outside. And look at the little ones. Oh yes. Hello little young money plant. <laughs>